wants me to go out. Wanted to show what um, me look in a medium shirt looks like right now before I talk to you. So as you saw by my breakfast uh, this morning, it didn't look very healthy uh, at all. I mean, it's the, probably the, the un most unhealthy looking breakfast that you could possibly think of. What's ironic is that that diet has actually made some fairly drastic changes in my overall health. Uh, at least in, in two categories in particular, my weight and my blood pressure. So I don't know if you remember, about a year ago, um, in the cabin here, I was cooking a, a couple of meals and I was talking about my, my blood pressure and how it was high. I wasn't feeling well at the time. My diet was quite poor because I was uh, just working so much. I wasn't uh, preparing healthy meals. And every time I went into town, I was getting fast food. It was just a horrible especially for somebody like me who has throughout my life lived most, uh, you know, fairly substantial outdoor lifestyle and also been very aware of my diet. Uh, right from a uh, teenage, teenager, I used to uh, work out, go to the gym, play sports. Uh, I would do a lot of research on, on diet and I ate very, very clean and healthy for a long time. I didn't drink until like between the ages of 19 and 30 or something like that. So it's very... Uh, aware of my diet and very um, concerned about uh, continuing to to eat well now at that time I, about a year ago like I said wasn't feeling well so when I was in a grocery store I used one of those heart um, uh, heart rate monitors and a blood pressure monitor and it came back with a really high reading and I know those things aren't 100% accurate when you're walking around shopping and stuff you're gonna have different blood pressure levels but it was enough to convince me to make a doctor's appointment. Now here in Canada, we have relatively free healthcare, so I can go and get checkups regularly without uh, having any out-of-pocket expenses. So it's worthwhile doing anyway. And I suggest that if you have access to, to free or, or cheap healthcare that you do get regular checkups, especially as you reach my age. I'm uh, 48 right now, I'll be 49 in April. And um, my family history, uh, there's bl high blood pressure in it. It's just high blood pressure and low blood pressure. I think my mother had low blood pressure and now has high blood pressure because she's getting older. And diet's not great. Me, mom, and dad. My dad's uh, diet is not good. And he has heart conditions and high blood pressure. And he's had that since his, his he was in his 40s. Now he's 70. I said he'll be 77 this year. Still going strong, but uh, on medication. That's helping. Uh, control his um, his health yeah. so I have to be careful for those reasons uh, anyway because it's hereditary uh, high blood pressure and heart conditions and all kinds of things that uh, that you need to be aware of that can be um, made worsened by uh, uh, by poor diet and lack of exercise so anyway I did some research on on diet now back then I made a few changes, so back to sort of more of what I've, I've always done and that's eating uh, healthy, eating more wild game again, yeah, grass fed uh, beef and organic meats, organic vegetables and all that kind of stuff. So I think that helped a bit. My doctor is convinced, um, he's a traditional or typical medical doctor who believes everything should be cured by medicine rather than, than lifestyle changes, although I recommend some lifestyle changes. but doesn't believe that we can control everything through just lifestyle. Um, so he prescribed me uh, heart uh, medication, low, uh, blood pressure medication to help lower it. So between my diet and that, I'm not sure, I'm assuming that medication did its job and I've had blood pressure in the range of 130, 135 over say 100 or so. So back into fairly safe levels, not ideal, but closer to ideal um, and manageable, so pretty s stable. I don't like being on medis medicine or medications for a couple of reasons. One that um, probably the main one is that um, I don't want to be on the system, right? Part of what I'm doing here is to get off the system and not have to rely on stuff that I have to regularly regularly purchase and, and uh, and count on especially pharmaceutical companies so I try to avoid that so I wasn't happy that, with the fact that I may have to be on these things for the rest of my life anyway um, the meals that I cook here are often not my typical meals I'll maybe only eat that once twice three times a week or whatever I tend to eat healthier 
but they're not they're less interesting things to film and show you so if i'm just having salad and uh, spinach or something and and uh, vegetarian meal or something it's often not very interesting to show you so what you, you see then is a sort of a more flavorful meal that i've cooked that's more interesting but also looks unhealthy and a lot of you guys are concerned uh, probably rightfully so and have made suggestions about how to improve my diet so one of those suggestions was keto the ketogenic diet so i did some research i think mostly based on your recommendations and my wife as well is um not quite as active as i am and she's uh, gone up a little bit in weight and she's concerned about that and wants to lower it as well and uh she did the research and and between the two of us we decided we should start eating try the ketogenic diet and see how that helps see if it helps at all so we did that we started that three or four weeks ago maybe three and a half weeks ago you know, which is a diet it basically is an extremely high fat and no sugar diet very very low carb carbohydrates so your body ends up converting fat into ketones and the ketones are what um, provides the energy especially to your brain typically the brain can only operate on on glucose which is made from carbohydrates typically so it's an adjustment for your body but it is uh, potentially healthier for certain things it's also known as a sort of an anti-cancer -can diet because most cancers feed off of sugar in particular so if you eliminate sugar a lot of times you can actually stabilize or, or uh, uh, reverse the, the effects of cancer I mean, this is it's not just anecdotal there is scientific evidence to prove that so don't take my, I'm not a medical doctor don't ever take my advice for diet or medicine for that matter or health care but that's that's what research has come back that's what our research is, is showing us so anyway bottom line is that we tried this uh, change in diet and here are the results So that's my blood pressure and if I scrolled through and you saw that some of the previous readings some of those readings are go back to just prior to being medicated and and changing my diet the first time so over 160 uh, over 110 or, or whatever it was that's extremely high or it's on the in the high level for sure in the high category so it's very dangerous for me to continue operating with a high with blood pressure at that level and um, after medication like i said it came down to the 130 135 to to like 90 range now today's readings and i forgot to take it when i got up first thing this morning so i had a coffee which is bad for blood pressure it raises your blood pressure pretty well instantly uh, i took the blood pressure and it's around 120 over 80 average that's perfect that's exactly where i want to be or possibly even lower and i bet it would have been lower if i hadn't had the coffee um so that's the ideal range i took stop taking the blood pressure medication recently so that is strictly diet related now and and ex exercise but i've been getting the same amount of exercise probably over the last year or two so all i can attribute the change in blood pressure to is the diet now my weight um, as you can see, I'm in a medium t-shirt and it fits me perfectly even after a year or however long it's been since I started selling these t-shirts and uh, they, they tend to shrink over time, cotton especially, it's gone through a lot of washes and uh, it fits me perfectly. So I've dropped over 10 pounds in, in two weeks, first two, two and a half weeks of being on this diet, over 10 pounds. So I went from 185 down to 175. Um, last time i made major changes to my diet two or three years ago and exercise before i started this so three years ago maybe three and a half years ago i was 196 when i weighed myself i could not believe i got up to that level but it was mainly because i was working indoors uh, you know an office environment or from home and not getting much exercise and eating poorly going out to business meetings and stuff so i made a change got down to like 168 felt great a little thin I think for what I do and maybe a bit little little bit too light 
but I did feel good and I looked good, so I thought that was a good place to, to stay at that level. I think uh, ideally probably in the winter, like right now, I think this 175 weight is probably ideal for me. A little bit of fat. Um, I think probably, depending on how this year goes, I may add weights back in. So I'll either create a kind of a gym here or in the workshop or something and have a few weights around. And, um, and just otherwise, like maybe make some log uh, weight things that I can bench press and deadlift and, and curl and stuff like that. And, and then uh, chin-up bars and stuff like that. So lots of things I can do to, to just make sure that no, regardless of how hard I'm working, when I'm not on a particularly difficult project, that I can do something that's incrementally strengthening rather than just trying to stay stable like to kind of build my muscle mass back up again. I notice at this age when I slow down at all, my uh, upper body physique probably right now is a little weaker. Now my legs are probably stronger right now because of the walking around in the snow and carrying materials. So it's cyclical and I need to stabilize that. Now if you're a younger guy, it's probably not interesting you that much, but I think it's important at your age that uh, to start um, paying attention to your health so that things don't build up over time. My high blood pressure may be because there was lots of periods throughout the last 25 years where I've eaten very poorly and gotten little exercise and that starts to build up clogging arteries and stuff that's hard to reverse if, if at all. So better to have an entire life of, of healthy eating and, and healthy uh, and exercise and just overall healthy lifestyle, less alcohol, less coffee and um, you know, less stress and all that kind of stuff. So it's worthwhile objective. So loss of weight, low, low, lower blood pressure. That's been the result of this diet. Now, by no means am I suggesting that bacon and chicken wings are a healthy diet. Um, the intent or the proper way to do a ketogenic diet is to eat most, mostly healthy fats, which mostly come from vegetable, like um, grains and... Uh, well, more like nuts, uh, avocado in particular is extremely healthy, um, seeds, all the oils that you get from plant material is definitely healthier than all the saturated fat you get from animals. Now some like cream is still good but again uh, you should go organic with all that stuff. All the meats should be organic or free range um, game ideally. I'm probably going to have to harvest a bear this year, maybe this spring, in order to get all the fat from a bear. Fall would be better when they're a lot fatter. I know people don't like, like love that idea of, of, uh, of uh, shooting a bear, but for up here, that's kind of a normal thing to do. And uh, it's an extremely valuable animal for providing all the things like fat, meat, fur, and other. And, uh, that's it, I guess. Anyway, I may, may have to do that, but I also need to start finding out ways that I can start growing things that I can extract oils from that are healthy. So the goal, like I said, for a ketogenic diet is like, it's high fat, so it's like 90% fat ideally. I'm probably at 70% fat, 20% protein, and less than 10% carbohydrate. So somewhere in that range. Um, works for me, so I'm a, so, I probably am losing it the weight mainly or as much because I'm getting a lot of protein so it's more of an Atkins diet but again I don't think it's sustainable long term so I need to find ways to change that so I'm not 100 percent convinced that all these changes are attributable only to the ketogenic diet I'm not sure I need to continue to experiment I've done that on and off in different periods of my life trying to figure out what is the healthiest diet for me I know I don't do well on a plant-based diet, 100% like vegetarian. I've tried that, and I just I never get to the point where I feel right. And I, when I do something, I typically and my wife and I research things to death, and we try to do things absolutely perfectly. So we, it's not like um, you know we're lacking certain things, or we're doing you're calling ourselves vegetarians at the time, eating mostly like pastries and chips and stuff like that. We go right in healthy organic um, uh, lots of variety uh, grow as much of the stuff as we can ourselves so it's uh, so, sort of an educated approach so i i know i'm, I'm emphatic that i uh there's certain things that don't work for me in a high 
plant-based diet does not work for me, although I do believe it's quite healthy. <laughs> There's Callie trying to get in with her dummy, or she's trying to entice me to go out. So, long-winded way of saying that I lost 10 pounds basically eating chicken wings and bacon and lots of unhealthy looking stuff. Uh, I'm not going to continue doing that. I'm going to improve that a little bit. And uh, stop eating bacon is not good for you. There's lots of bad things like nitrates in it that are just not good for you. It's hard to find an organic source of, of uh, bacon, of pork that um, has healthy fats. So I won't continue to do that. But it's worked for me to this point. I'm going to now clean it up and decide whether I'm going to continue with that or change my diet back to a more interesting, more balanced diet of, of uh, no sugar still. If you're going to change anything in your life, cutting, reducing the amount of alcohol or cutting it out and reducing uh, sugar alone, those two things that I've done over the last several weeks probably could be attributed to the weight loss and lower blood pressure as well. Coffee I don't drink as much as maybe it looks like on film. This is actually Chaga now. I did have a cup of coffee first thing in the morning, but it's usually just one cup. And often it's more like an espresso. And I might add cream or milk to that or just drink espresso straight. This is actually Chaga. So it looks like coffee a lot of times. It is black, but it's actually, uh, from all the research I've done at least, seems to be a healthy alternative. And I actually really enjoy it. I actually prefer it to coffee. So that's what the uh, I wanted to update you with with was with my health and if there's anybody um, else considering that I'm one of the success stories I guess you could call it for that particular diet if you want to try it don't uh, again rely on what I'm saying do your research uh, consult with a doctor and whatever other professionals you need to talk to before you make any lifestyle changes including uh, even the rigorous activity that I do outside snowshoeing. I've had some people asking me about that, if they're over heavier, overweight. And uh, again, don't have a heart attack trying to, to replicate what I'm doing here as I've been at this for a long time and worked myself my way into this lifestyle. So that's all I had to say today. <laughs> Maybe a lot too much talking again. But I'm going to uh, turn off the video now and get inside and get to work and throw that thing for Cali a little bit and uh, edit this video and get it out to you as soon as possible. So thanks for watching. I'll see you at the cabin next time. Take care.